morning. My name is uh, Jean, and I'm a kayak guide and master naturalist for outside Hilton Head. We're out in this beautiful Broad Creek area of Hilton Head this morning. Uh, this, uh, this area is known as a, a rather extensive salt marsh, and uh, one of the plants that dominates this, this and all southeastern salt marshes is this, this beautiful Spartina alterniflora uh, grass. And there's possibly nothing I, I really enjoy more talking about uh, here in this, this beautiful uh, salt marsh than the Spartina grass. It's just an amazing grass. The habitat that we're in this morning is very salt. Um, but despite that, uh, this grass thrives uh, where other grasses would be killed off. Interestingly enough, this Spartina alterniflora grass, or border marsh grass as it is often referred to, does need fresh water. It is a freshwater plant. It has an amazing ability uh, to survive in this salt environment. Um, first of all, because it has this nice waxy kind of cuticle that repels or acts as a barrier to salt. And the stem portion of the plant is so well designed that it actually filters. It has its own filter. So that as this beautiful plant draws up water from its roots, it actually has the ability to filter its own water, which is really, really fascinating. As it filters the water, um, it serves to protect this beautiful environment as well. As a matter of fact, Spartina serves as an incredible buffer, probably the most important buffer between our development, our land, our homes, our buildings, our driveways, our roads, and the actual water um, or the waterways of, of the low country by filtering the water. Spartina is a, is a perennial grass. So in this beautiful autumn marsh, uh, we can see some of the early signs of the dying off of this marsh. As a perennial, the roots will survive, but the stalks, the more kind of visible portion of this beautiful plant, will die off. And as these stalks die off, they turn this amazing kind of golden brown as the, as the late fall and early winter approaches. As these stalks die off, they have a tendency to get knocked down by waves and wind and tides. And as they get knocked down, uh, they float around and become kind of rack. And that rack um, pretty much looks like this. And so this would be a good example of, of rack. And as the Spartina uh, floats around in rack, um, typically it becomes waterlogged, a process that may take as many as a few years. When it becomes waterlogged, it'll sink, and our marine bacteria will begin a process of decay or breaking down of this, of this amazing grass. And then the grass essentially uh, becomes food, food for the smallest of our creatures, our marsh periwinkle, our little crabs, and the tiniest of creatures out here. Some of this rack will actually float and deposit high into the areas of, of marshes and serve for a wonderful area for birds to roost. Uh, it'll create a, a ready supply of nesting materials for uh, the spring uh, for our bird population. Some of it actually begins this long, slow process of drifting out to the Calabone Sound and will eventually make its way onto our ocean beaches. The offshore currents will wash it up and it'll deposit along our high tide line. So you may have seen this um, as you've walked down to our beach at our, at our high tide mark. It's not really a nuisance. In fact, it's, it's an amazing recycling uh, of, of purpose. And once this rack meet, meets our ocean beach, it serves a whole no, new purpose. It, it collects sand as it blows and helps uh, in its own way to control erosion on our beach side gradually disintegrate um, and become part of our beach. Spartina is just simply an amazing example of recycling in nature. In life, it provides protection. Um, during high tide, our little fish and larval types of creatures can swim back into um, these stalks and hide from the bigger fish. The marsh periwinkle, very, very common resident out here, um, can chomp on this and, and use it for food. And then in death, it serves a whole nother purpose. It becomes basically part of this, this beautiful water um, and becomes a food source. It becomes a nesting source, um, an area where our migratory birds can actually roost and rest during their trip. And then, of course, when it redeposits,
because it's on our ocean beach, um, it has a whole other purpose in preventing erosion. So really an amazing part of our, our low, low country, uh, a part of our ecosystem. And, and I hope by the next time you, you walk our ocean beach and you walk across this and think, ah, it's not really so much a nuisance. It's just an amazing, an amazing part of our ecosystem. So come join us at Outside Hilton Head um, and enjoy our autumn march. It is one of the most spectacular times of the year.